Hello and welcome to our fifth Future Endeavours workshop. Um, so I'm Hannah and I work at Flying Fish Studio in Sheffield and it's lovely to have you with us today. Um, so today we're going to be um, combining science with art and we are creating some gorgeous colourful backgrounds which you can then choose um, to do whatever you'd like with. I'll give a few ideas um, but then you can go away and experiment yourself. So these are the types of coloured backgrounds we'll be making. You can see the blend of colours can be really, really gorgeous. I've just got a mixture of blue ones here. Now, for example, on this one, I wouldn't tend to have the piece as a whole. It's just there might be areas of the piece that you'd like to cut out and perhaps um, stick on a, on a card, like a thank you card perhaps. I have one under here. So something like that, you might like to make little note cards out of them, or notebooks, or um, cut them out for collaging with. So we're just um, making backgrounds or different coloured papers today um, using um, vinegar, bicarbonate of soda, and food colouring. Okay, and the where the science comes into this is that the vinegar and the bicarbonate of soda react together. Um, to form carbon dioxide. That creates a fizzing um, and then we spread our um, the mixture that we're going to make on our paper to create these beautiful colours. What I'll start off by doing before we actually go into the art is do our little chemical reaction in a mug. Okay, so we've got some bicarbonate of soda and some vinegar and I'm just going to put about a teaspoon into the mug and then I'm going to add some vinegar to this. So the sodium bicarbonate, which is this, the bicarbonate of soda, that's going to react with the acetic acid in this vinegar. Okay, so I'm putting about 10 times as much vinegar as I have sodium bicarbonate, that's approximately, okay, and then I'm going to pop this glove on. And what happens is a chemical reaction takes place. So the sodium bicarbonate and the acetic acid, they react together to form sodium acetate, water, and carbon dioxide, okay, so sodium bicarbonate plus acetic acid makes sodium acetate plus water plus um, carbon dioxide. Okay, that's the chemical equation for it. Now the reason I'm putting this glove on this glass is um, the chemical reaction is taking place inside here and to show that we do have a gas being produced, I pop this glove on because at the moment it's, um, it's quite um, floppy, okay? But when this reaction takes place, the carbon dioxide will um, be released and it will fill up this glove, okay? So it'll have nowhere else to escape to because I've popped this glove on really tight. It's important that there's a nice seal around this glass. You don't want one that's too loose. Um, otherwise, all that will happen is the carbon dioxide will escape into the air around us. So we're popping this on. And then what will happen is over the next few minutes, as um, this fizzing continues, okay, so if I hold this up close, you might be able to see. I wonder if you can see the fizzing. If you do this um, at your home, you'll be able to see, and also if you're quiet, you'll be able to hear the fizzing, and that's the carbon dioxide being released. And so eventually, um, as this chemical reaction continues, this glove will fill up with the carbon dioxide. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this here for now so that you can see and we'll see um, by the end of the workshop if it's filled up anymore. Okay. I can actually hear a lot of fizzing, it's quite a, it's quite a nice one to listen to. Do be aware that um, with this experiment, um, wherever, whichever room you're doing it in, um, it will smell quite a bit of, um, of, 
the the car well not the carbon dioxide but the um, sodium acetate that's being produced and obviously the vinegar and the bicarbonate of soda they're quite um, smelly in themselves <laughs> so um, do be prepared for that also do wear clothes and um, because we're using food coloring make sure you wear clothes um, which it doesn't matter if they get stained and also if you cover your work surface too there's a lot of fizzing going on in here so for our art workshop now I'm showing you the science we're going to need a tray or even just a thick pile of newspaper we're also going to need our bicarbonate of soda, our vinegar, so this is just the types that I would put on my chips, okay? We'll also need some ramekin dishes with some spoons or just like little bowls. These are to put our food colouring into. We'll also need some um, food colouring, so I've got some, but this is actually blue food colouring, some pink and some yellow okay and we'll also need some I've just got a um, normal plain paper you can try different types of paper and um, but just normal like printer paper works really well so for this um, I'm going to take one of my ramekin dishes and I'm going to start by adding some bicarbonate of soda So what we're doing now is similar to what's happening in here, but um, we're just using smaller quantities and also we're using food colouring because we want to colour our paper. So to this I'm going to start by adding some pink, quite a ready, ready pink. Okay. So you can experiment with um, the ratio. We want it so that it's not um, it's not so runny because we do want a fair amount of the sodium and bicarbonate in here. But we also don't want it too thick that it's almost like a spread that we can't use on our paper. So it's this kind of consistency, okay? Kind of like single cream and I'm going to do the same with my other ramekin dishes and the food colouring so about a teaspoon and then I'm going to add some blue to one of mine of course you could mix the food colourings to create different colours so a bit of blue to this one and give it a mix so in here at the moment is just the food colouring and the um, bicarb of soda. Okay, so there's that one. And then last but not least, we need some yellow. So pop some yellow in here. Now something happens when the yellow is added to this um, bicarb of soda because it actually turns red. It does turn yellow okay it does turn yellow again when i add the vinegar on the paper in a little bit but at the moment it's a really quite deep red so i wonder what your food coloring does at home if yours is the same if you have any questions at all um whilst you're watching this do just ask away hopefully i'll see them and be able to answer or if you have any questions afterwards you can just contact me um on Flying Fish Studio, you can contact me on my Facebook page. Okay, so now we've got our colours. Oh, and you might be able to see if we come back to our chemical reaction, it's really there's a lot of carbon dioxide that's filling up here. <laughs> it's almost full as if we've got um, an actual hand inside. <laughs> it's a carbon dioxide hand. Okay, so it's still actually fizzing away. So hopefully we'll get it even more full by the end. Okay, so I'll leave that there. So, for those that are just joining us now, these are the types of backgrounds that we can create. It's okay if some areas you're not so keen on, you can cut out areas that you do like, but we're creating coloured papers that we can use as backgrounds, collages, and notebooks, anything you'd like to use them for. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to pop some of our colour onto our paper. So you can experiment with um, different colours, see what you prefer. Personally, I really enjoyed doing the, the blues and adding a bit of yellow to it to create that green as well. Um, just because it kind of looks like the sea to me, or even the sky. But I'm going to experiment with some red in this one. These two are mixing together, so hopefully I'll get some kind of purple too. So you can use a paintbrush if you'd like, or I'm just... Um, it's quite an abstract art anyway, so I'm just using my spoon to top some of it on. Okay. Doesn't matter if the whole paper isn't filled, because I can just cut out the section that I'd like. And then what I'm going to do is use the vinegar. Now before I use the vinegar, so remember this is sodium bicarbonate, so that's the bicarbonate of soda that's in here with the food colouring. That's reacting with the acetic acid in the vinegar when I pop it on, and that's making sodium acetate plus water plus carbon dioxide. I'm just going to write this chemical equation down so that if you um, are interested and want to look it up at all, and also if you're someone that likes it written down in the chemical equation, then you'll have it here to hand. So, there we go. So, might be backwards on your screen, I'm not sure. Um, if it is, I'm going to pop it down in the link below afterwards anyway. But basically we have um, sodium, sodium bicarbonate and um, plus the acetic acid. And that makes sodium acetate. So that's NaC2H3O2 plus H2O, that's water, plus CO2, that's carbon dioxide. Okay, so I'll pop this chemical equation um, in a link below as well if you're interested. Okay, but this is what's happening in our science art experiment. Okay, so I'm going to add the vinegar now. Oh, amazing! <laughs> you get these gorgeous colours! It's fizzing as well, I'm not sure if you can hear it. But if you're, um, if you're doing it at home, then you'll be able to hear the fizzing and see all of these colours merging together. You could, if you've got a tray, you could um, swirl them around. You might like to get your teaspoon as well and you can move the colours around. So this will start to stain the paper underneath. Oh, there's some gorgeous rainbowy colours here. Wow. Okay. So yeah, we've got the blue combining with the yellow to make a green, which is looking gorgeous. Okay. So this is what we have at the moment. I can't tip it up too much. I'll tip this down. Okay. So at the moment, it's still quite obviously very wet and um, but what we're going to do is if, if we just leave it for like an hour or so and um, it'll start to dry off and then um, what will happen is there'll obviously be still a lot of liquid still there but the colour will have soaked into the paper by then and so what we can do is we can just get um, like a paper towel uh, or some tissues and once you've left it for an hour, an hour you can just um, dab off some of that excess um, vinegar and food colouring. And then after that, you're going to leave it to dry for another day or two, depending on how wet your piece is. And then after that, you'll find that there's, um, sometimes it's like a thin layer um, of, of white, um, like a powdery white left over, okay? So that'll be the sodium um, acetate and maybe some of the um, sodium bicarbonate as well that's, that's not reacted. So there'll be that on and you can scrape that off as well. And then you'll be left with your um, coloured paper. Now once you've um, made your coloured paper, it's then totally up to you as to what you would like, um, what you'd like to do with it. Okay, let's just pop this out of the way. So it may be that 
One idea is to create little note cards, so like this one. So this just says thank you very much, so this is just like a little thank you card for someone. So all I've done here is I've chosen a section of my paper that I like. So say I like this yellowy blue bit down here, I've cut it out and I've just um, written on it and then I've mounted it under some white, on some white card, okay? It also may be that you use actually the patterns that you haven't had much control over because you don't have much control over this art other than the colour. Um, but it might be that you use, um, so for example this one, I really like that I've got this really nice bold line here. And so I could choose to draw some patterns around the outside and create a piece of art using these blank spaces. So for instance, I haven't decided what I'm doing, so I'm just going to make it up. But I'm, I enjoy drawing kind of leaf shapes. So I've got a flower shape, almost like poking out behind, could be a cloud or anything like that. So I've just done a flower. Um, I might do another one up here. I could fill it in, see what that would look like. Have it as like almost a silhouette, have it as a totally black pattern. So I'm going to fill that in, see if I like that look. You can always practice your patterns on a plain sheet of paper first. So currently I'm drawing on the white section. Okay. So you can draw any patterns you'd like. It might be that um, I could almost imagine this as, um, a, oh, it could be from above. So I could imagine this is like a lake and I could draw a scenery around here. Um, so yeah, to see, um, it might be that you have an idea in your head and then create your art um, work from the colors, or it may be that actually you create these and then afterwards you think, oh, okay, what could I, what could I create from um, the colours that I've used? So for example, with this one, this really reminds me um, like these yellows of almost like um, an explosion in space maybe, okay? So I could use these um, and maybe draw some planets around it, okay? And then I'd probably cut these white areas off. So you can experiment with um, what you would what you would like to create, or it may just be that you use these as papers. So in collaging, um, or there are so many workshops um, out there that use papers. I know I've got a few where you can um, you can use magazines and papers and just create artwork from that. So these could just be used as as coloured beautiful coloured papers. Um, instead of buying them, you're making them. Okay. So, um, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed. Um, so this is our final um, Future Endeavours workshop with me. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions about any of them, um, do just get in contact and let me know. It'll be lovely to hear from you. And yes, that's all for now. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, bye.